A few months before the 2015 general elections, Yemi Oshibajo, who was then the vice presidential candidate of the All Progressive Congress, was invited to Obafemi Aulo University to talk about the manifesto of his party and their plan to wrest power from the People's Democratic Party, which had ruled Nigeria for 16 years uninterrupted. At the time, I was a freshman in OAU, but I could tell that the atmosphere was palpable with hope. On the day of the talk, students started to trickle in in droves minutes before the commencement of the event at Odudua Hall. But to our surprise, we were later told that Oshibajo could not make it due to other pressing engagement, but he had sent someone else to delegate for him. We became infuriated and many of us stormed out despite pleas from Oshibajo's representative who we didn't care to note his name or face. We wanted to hear Oshibajo speak, not a delegate. This recollection of mine shows how the Nigerian populace and electorate placed so much hope and anticipation in the APC. The 2015 presidential election turned out to be more than an election. It was a referendum. Nigerians had grown tired of the PDP, which at the time could not tackle the Boko Haram menace. The PDP had lost a lot of goodwill among Nigerians for its failure to fight corruption and salvage a collapsing economy. Nigerians took stock of the 16 years of PDP rule and saw no reason to continue to give the party their mandate. The rest, they say, is history. Next year, the APC would have ruled Nigeria for 8 years. If we were disappointed in PDP in 2015, what most of us feel for APC under Muhammadu Buhari is way worse. Most people who championed the APC in 2015 today feel nothing but regret, guilt, revulsion, and outright disgust. Interesting though, for some weird reason, there are calls online and offline by a cross-section of Nigerians to bring back Good Luck Jonathan, the man they ousted in 2015. This is incredibly funny to me and I think it highlights how protein Nigerians tend to be. I cannot count how many tweets I read every day romanticizing the Good Luck Jonathan administration. On Friday, Channel TV reported how protesters stormed Jonathan's private office in Abuja, calling for him to declare for presidency. Again, this was the man they ousted in 2015. Rumor in fact has it that he is already making consultations to run under APC, the party that defeated him. Nigeria is a country where the past is constantly romanticized. Ours is a society of better yesteryear. We make excuses for the failures of the past to demonize those of the present. We use ridiculous indices to compare the present with the past. So for instance, it is common to hear Nigerians compare how much a bag of rice cost under Jonathan with how much it costs presently under Buhari. While admittedly, there has been skyrocket inflation in the prices of goods and commodities since Jonathan, that is by no way any proof of sound economic policies under Jonathan. To show how inconsistent this logic is, all anyone needs to do is compare how much a bag of rice cost during the despotic regime of Sani Abacha with how much it cost under Jonathan. This selective nostalgia only creates a situation whereby we recycle politicians from the establishment. It leaves little room for independents and new candidates to compete favorably. 2015 was a break from the norm. But now, it seems we want to re-establish the norm. As long as we continue to focus on APC and PDP, things are only going to get worse, which will lead us to continue to romanticize the past. It is undoubtedly clear that Nigerians need an alternative to the PDP-APC hegemony, and thankfully, we have a crop of fresh faces to pick from. How do we defeat the establishment? This is a question I've had to ponder on as 2023 gets closer. 
To defeat the establishment, there is a lot of habits we need to change as a people. We know elections in Nigeria are won with money. That is how the APC and PDP have continued to stay relevant. To defeat the establishment, Nigerians would need to go all out to donate and finance any anti-establishment candidate of their choice. Also, we need to have realized by now that any political party that wants to buy votes should never be trusted with power. Since the return of democracy in 1999, there is no election that has not been marred by vote buying. Every election cycle, we see all parties do lot cash and food items to impoverish Nigerians. To defeat the establishment, we cannot afford to vote any party that plays this card. To defeat the establishment, we need to see 2023 as a referendum. We need to replicate the anger we took to the polls in 2015 and this time the anger should be directed not just towards the PDP but also the APC. We need to hold both of them accountable for what has become of Nigeria in the past 20, 24 years. The most important action that needs to be taken to ensure a different outcome is actual participation. Writing Twitter threads about how messed up the system is isn't going to magically usher in your desired candidate. You need to get your voter card and show up at the polls. That should be the bare minimum. Otherwise, 2023 will be an election between APC and PDP and in a few years from now, we will be romanticizing the Buhari administration. If you've not registered for your PVC, I will be sharing a link in the description. Thanks for watching. Um, subscribe to my channel and don't forget to like this video and drop your comments below. You can also follow me on social media to keep the conversation going. Links to my handles are in the description also. I'll see you guys in the next one.